Anthem is not too far away now. You're about to get your hands on the public demo come February. I've made quite a few videos on what to expect, but what I didn't cover is how Anthem will keep your interest and be compelling enough to keep you playing. Besides the gameplay, I have one word for you. Loot. Well, think powerful, randomized abilities that support crazy builds that differ from your friends. In this video, we'll talk gear, rarities, builds, and more, so let's get started. Each exosuit, your javelin, has five gear slots. Two slots that give combat-focused javelin-specific abilities like mortars, missiles, lightning strikes, and so on. One for a support-based javelin-specific ability like creating shields for your team or marking targets. These gear pieces give abilities that you will be using throughout your gameplay experience and they can be swapped in and out before a mission. One slot is for weapons, which you can equip two, and the final slot is for components, which augment your javelin in large ways. More on that soon. So Anthem uses six rarities for loot. You got common, uncommon, rare, epic, masterwork, and finally, legendary. You can get a firewall mortar, for example, in all six rarities, but they will be different. How? Well, besides their stats like damage, recharge rate, or fire status, which is how quickly you can set enemies alight, each item over common will have one or multiple inscriptions. Inscriptions are modifiers to increase your power, and there are hundreds in the game. And, well, they do things like extend your flight time, increase explosive damage, elemental damage, and so on. So, two rare firewall mortars may have completely different inscriptions and encourage completely different builds. Very much like Diablo, but here's where it gets even closer. Masterwork items also have powerful effects associated with them in the orange text you see here. When you defeat an enemy, an explosion happens for example, and that explosion primes other abilities and feeds into other gear. So a masterwork item will always have that powerful orange effect, but will have different inscriptions. Now legendary is much the same as masterwork, except it's your highest end gear. The devs led us to believe that inscriptions will differ on legendary loot as well. You get this loot from the highest level and hardest content in the game, so it's extremely rare and your big chase item. Note that you can craft items, but they will be at the level you are when you craft them. Oh yeah, your pilot gains levels as well, and you can select skills as you level that affects all javelins that you pilot. Now we mention slots. The combat focus slots will be abilities you use to supplement your playstyle. In the case of the ranger, the first slot they can equip gear that grants abilities like missiles and poison darts. In the second slot, different kinds of grenades like frost grenades and seekers. All of these abilities are given via gear, so different drops will have different properties and power. As you equip more powerful gear, your power will increase. This applies to support gear as well. Next is your weapons. They have different stats and abilities as well and can supplement your playstyle. Last is components. They function much the same as armor does in Diablo, except without the raw stats. They give further unique abilities and inscriptions, and you can have up to six on your javelin. An example is Explosive Expert, which makes all blast damage increase if all you use is blast damage. Keep in mind, none of this can be gotten with in-game purchases. There is no power gained from spending real money. You'll just have to play the game like a normal person, go through the six difficulty settings, and get them all yourself. So what's an example of a high level build? Well, on this Ranger, we have a few pieces that work together. This one has an increased recharge rate of all abilities while hovering. With the missile, if you get a kill, the recharge rate on your grenades is further reduced. Killing multiple enemies, which is easy with the grenades, restores shields and also adds a large amount to your ultimate meter. Then using the ultimate increases your gear damage. So there's a loop of missile, grenade, and then ultimate, all while hovering, that is supplemented by all the cooldown reduction, bonus damage, and extra flight time gear. Now there was a caveat with the footage shown, it's a very early build and a lot of gear pieces aren't active, and the numbers are wrong since they were messing around with the balance. So hover time should be quite a bit longer and the gear should be doing quite a bit more damage in the full build. This is uh, set to hard difficulty, so you kind of get the point what's going on. Now, there are tons of combinations you can make to create builds that suit you. Example, you might focus around priming and detonating for combos. What is priming? Well, when an enemy is set alight, electrocuted, frozen, for example, they will be primed. Then when you use a detonator ability like the Colossus Railgun, it will set up a combo for big damage. 
Each javelin has a different effect when they combo. Colossus, for example, sets off an area of effect explosion. The ranger will do extreme single target damage. The storm will spread the prime effect, like fire for example, and the interceptor will gain an aura of that effect that was primed, like a fire aura. Now, customizing your javelin with abilities, gear, and so on to influence power is not strictly cosmetic, beyond seeing a mortar, for example, on your javelin's shoulder. We talked about this more in depth in the 50 things you should know about Anthem video, link below, but personalization is available and a huge part of the game. No single javelin will look the same unless you intend it. You can personalize the type of material your javelin uses, how its parts look, the colors, vinyls, and so on. Now this is the area you can spend a bit of real money in, though there won't be any loot boxes. So with customization and personalization together, you'll have something that feels truly unique and something to be striving towards. For more on what to expect from Anthem, check out my videos below. Now how successful this game will be relies on a lot of factors. The public perception is one of them. Keep in mind the publisher is EA, though the developers are Bioware, so naturally people are pretty cautious. It also depends on how fun the game is and how much progression and reward it has. Right now, it's looking very promising as just from a small amount of information, I could deduce a handful of builds I'd like to try if I got my hands on the game. I like to think of this as a Mass Effect-like Iron Man game with Diablo RPG looting. So thank you for dropping by guys. I know the standard drill is subscribing, hitting that bell button, but it really, really does help tremendously. If you wanna go that one step further though, I just started a Patreon page. It will support my choice to leave my full-time job and create content, which is probably not all too smart, but hey, I'm not a smart guy. So I'll be back very soon with more Anthem content. Keep your eyes peeled to Slash Tactics.